Welcome back. In this video, we'll have a quick look at how we can install the Dart SDK as well as install Visual Studio Code, which will be the IDE that we will be using. Now, up until now, we've used Dartpad only, which is Dartpad.dev. And it's got some limitations because you are basically limited to one file in here. If you need one more than one file, you will you will get stuck. And also you cannot read input from the user. So because we will be looking at getting some input from the user and doing some stuff with it, it is important that we will be able to use Visual Studio Code or some other IDE. So I've chosen uh, Visual Studio Code because it's a lightweight uh, IDE for Dart. Well, for a lot of programming languages, but it's a lightweight IDE. That's that's quite nice to work with. So in order to install the SDK, let's start with that first. You will go to dartpad.dev and let's click on install SDK. So this will take you to this page that says get the Dart SDK. They also tell you that if you've got Flutter already installed, it includes the Dart SDK, so you don't need to install that again. So there's two ways installing the Dart SDK, and that is by downloading the SDK as a zip file and then doing some uh, environmental variables and stuff like that. And also there's uh, the command line interface that you can also use in order to run some commands and then install it. So if you're using a Mac, I would recommend you use these. Just go and uh, run these commands in your terminal and see if you can get Dart installed. So I'm going to run through the Windows part of it. Uh, you'll also see that I'm running, you see the blue blocks around the side. I'm running a virtual machine on my Mac um, that's running Windows. So we can look at the installation for Windows. So it's, it's a lot similar between the two. There's not a much differences between the two on how you install it. So let's download the SDK as a zip file. So you're going to click on this link, download the SDK as a zip file, which will take you to this page that says this is the Dart SDK archive. So there's different channels. There's the stable channel. There's the beta channel. Uh, you get some other dev channels and main channels and stuff like that. Uh, but we will keep to the stable channel. So you can see uh, you can choose your version at the top and you can choose your operating system. So if you want to download for Mac or for Linux, you can do it here. So I'm going to choose Windows and I'm going to choose the 64-bit one. If you've got a 32-bit, then you will probably go with this one. So I'm going to install this Dart SDK or download it. So it's it's a 150 meg file that gets downloaded. And I will look at that file now. The second thing that we have to install is or to download is Visual Studio Code. So you can just go to code.visualstudio.com and you can download this for Windows. So this should also directly start the downloading and you can install it normally like you would any other software application. So I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to install it. I'm going to accept the agreement. I'm going to say next and next and next. And then we can add to the path and create a desktop icon and say next and install. Now, while it's installing, let's just go to the folder where this one is uh, installed. Right. So there we've got it. I'm going to extract this one quickly. Right, and there is my Dart SDK. So I'm going to copy, or let me, let's say cut this folder here, and I'm going to go to this PC, then I go to C, and I'm going to create a new folder here. So let's create a new folder, and I'm going to call this folder Dart. Now, try and, try and keep your folders as simple as possible. Don't use any spaces, because uh, especially Android, it doesn't like spaces at all. So so try and keep your, your folder structure quite easy to work with. So I'm going to go into Dart and I'm going to paste this SDK here. Right, so the next step is to ba basically show our path in your environment variables of Windows. Where is this Dart SDK? So I'm going to go into it and I'm going to go into bin. So make sure that you are seeing this folder structure currently. And you can see I'm under C, Dart and so forth until I get to bin. Then right click on bin and say copy address. Now what you need to do is to go into the search bar and search for ENV, which will get you to the environmental variables. So if you go into that and click on environmental variables, you'll see that you probably already have a path there. If there's no path variable there, you can just say new and you can use the variable, let's say path like that. And you can paste your uh, value that we copied now from that folder structure right in there. So mine already has got a path there, so I will just double click it to open it. 
and I'm going to add a new one and just paste it there and say OK and say OK again. Now in order to see if this worked and if our SDK is up and running and everything's working, let's just close all of these. Uh, we'll not launch it now. Let's go and we're going to search for CMD, which is the command prompt. You're going to right click on your command prompt and run as administrator. Now, the only thing you need to do is to type Dart there. And if you see this message, you know that Dart is actually installed correctly. On a Mac, you can just go uh, command spacebar, which will bring up your, uh, your search bar. And then you can just type terminal and it will also bring you here or bring you to a command prompt or a terminal window. Okay, so if, if you ran Dart now and this executes, then you know everything is set up correctly. So now we can close that and let's go to Visual Studio Code. Right, so the first thing we're going to do in Visual Studio Code is to go to the extensions and you need to install the Dart extension. So I'm going to type Dart there at the top and you go down and you click on Dart there. In my case, it's 3.19.2, but it could be different, could be a higher version when you look at this video. So then you just install. Right, after it's been installed, you must be able to see this. This extension is enabled globally. Then you know it's fine. You are ready to go. Now, some other extensions that's quite interesting, if you can, you can have a look at uh, this page um, or just go and search on Google, must have VS Code extensions for Dart or for Flutter. And you can see most of them list this bracket pair colorizer. So let's search for that one quickly. And you can see there's number two and just install it. So you can see basically this colorizer gives you color coded brackets. So it's easy for you to see where the brackets start and ends, which is quite nice. So you can install this extension. If it says this extension is enabled globally, then you are done and you're ready for that one. And you can, you can look at different extensions that you can use. They're also listing some others here. For example, um, error lens, you can try and install that one, which helps you with some errors and so forth. I'm not going to install a lot of extensions, but this one is really helpful to in include the bracket pair colorizer. Okay, and that's basically it now for uh, Visual Studio Code. So you can just close it down. Now what you will need to do in order to create your applications for Visual Studio Code, go to your command prompt and I would I would say let's go into that Dart folder now. So I'm going to say CD Dart. Now I'm in the Dart folder and I'm going to make a directory or a folder and I'm going to call it Projects. Okay, so just change to the directly directory uh, Projects. Now in there I can basically just go and say code space dot and that will open up a new project for me in Visual Studio Code ready for me to work. So let's make this one full screen. Right, so right at the top we're going to start off with one file and I'm going to call it main.dart. So all of your Dart files must end with a dot dart there so it is actually a dart file and it knows to use the dart compiler it also asks you uh, would you like to use the recommended vs code setting so we can say yes right and now in here we remember that we actually need the main method in order for any application to start so there's the main method and we can just print out let's say hello world now, if you go to File and Save, you can see the shortcut there is Control and S. So you can use Control S to save your file. Now, let's see how we can run this. So you can see there's Terminal at the top and you can choose New Terminal. This opens up Terminal at the bottom. And the easiest way to run this now is to just to go and say Dart Main.Dart. So whatever you named your file, we will always start with Main.Dart. So you're going to say Dart Main.Dart and just click on Enter and it prints out whatever you did there. So this is how you can get the console part running. Now you can also choose run there, run without debugging or maybe with debugging. And then you'll need to add, you can see at the, at the bottom, it basically gives you a hint there. Set the program value to where your file is that you want to launch. So let's add a program value. And we can set that launch file 
as main dot dot. Right, then we can just save it again, control S, and then if we go to run now and run without debugging, you can also see that it runs at the bottom. So uh, because we're going to use the, the console also to get input from the user, the easiest way to run this is in terminal. So we will basically just saying dart main dot dart and our application would run. Now later on, we will also be creating a folder called lib that will have all our libraries, but our main dot dart should be right in the root of the directory. So it's easy, easy to work with. And then all the other files that we'll be working with will place in the library folder. So I hope you've got this all set up. So for everything else uh, carrying on, all the videos, we will sometimes we'll be using uh, just Dartpad again, and sometimes we'll be using Visual Studio Code. So it's up to you which one you want to use. Dartpad will work 100% fine if we're not reading something from the console and we're also only using one file, then Dartpad is more than enough for you to start coding. Uh, Visual Studio Code will help us with when we start using different files and also if we want to get user input from the console. Thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one.